This video will demonstrate a systematic approach to examining the respiratory system. It will also give examples of pathology that may be encountered in an abnormal respiratory system. As with any examination, wash your hands, introduce yourself, get permission of the patient, inquire about pain and ensure privacy, adequate exposure and correct position. For a respiratory examination, the patient should be sitting at 45 degrees and exposed to the waist. I'm just going to start by having a look around the bed, so don't mind me. At this point, the doctor is looking for any monitoring, treatments or paraphernalia surrounding the patient. I'm just going to have a look at you for a moment as well. The doctor is now inspecting the patient. Here is an example of what to look out for when inspecting the patient. If I could start by having a look at your hands, please. The doctor is looking for signs of clubbing, cigarette stains and peripheral cyanosis. And can you make this sign, please? Clubbing can be demonstrated by Sharmuth's window test. Normally there is a diamond-shaped window between the fingernails of the two index fingers. However, in a patient with clubbing, this window disappears. Here are some examples of respiratory causes of clubbing. That's good, thank you. And if I can have a look at your hands again? The doctor is looking for wasting of the small muscles of the hands, particularly the dorsal interossi and thenar eminence which can be a sign of Pankost's tumour in the apex of the lung, compressing the lower nerve roots of the brachial plexus. That's good. And can you put your arms out like this and cock your wrists back and close your eyes, please, and hold them there? Here the doctor is looking for any signs of CO2 retention flap that looks like this, or salbutamol-induced tremor that looks like this. I'm just going to take your pulse. At this point, the doctor takes the patient's pulse for 15 seconds and then measures the patient's respiratory rate for a further 15 seconds. A normal respiratory rate is 12 to 16 breaths per minute. And at this point, I would also offer to take the blood pressure. If you just relax your head back and turn your head to that side. The doctor will now look for the jugular venous pressure in the neck. This is the pulsation of the internal jugular vein, which can be found above the clavicle between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. And I'm just going to feel for one of the pulses in your neck. The doctor is feeling for a bounding pulse, which is present in CO2 retention. And can you turn your head back to the middle, please? I'm just going to feel for your windpipe. This might be a bit uncomfortable, OK? The doctor is now feeling for any tracheal deviation, and then the cricosternal distance. The JVP is raised when it is more than 3 cm in vertical height above the sternal angle. A raised JVP may be caused by the examples shown. The trachea may be deviated in the situations shown. The cricosternal distance is the distance between the suprasternal notch and the cricoid cartilage. This should be three fingers. If the chest is hyperexpanded, the distance is shorter. I'm just going to have a look at your face now. The doctor is looking for facial plethora which is sometimes present in smokers and SVC obstruction. The doctor also compares the size of the pupils and the degree of ptosis and anhydrosis, which can indicate Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome and SVC obstruction can both be caused by Pankost's tumour. The doctor will now check for conjunctival pallor, which is a sign of anemia. And if you could look up to the ceiling and pull down on one of your eyelids. That's great. Thank you very much. And could you open your mouth? The doctor is looking at the mucous membranes to assess hydration status. And stick out your tongue. And could you put the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth? And for central cyanosis to assess the oxygenation of the patient. Could you put your hands behind your head for me? That's great. I'm just going to have a look at your chest. Here the doctor is inspecting the anterior chest wall and axillae for scars, radiotherapy tattoos, skin changes and any chest wall deformity. She also watches the breathing pattern carefully. I'm just going to put my hands on your chest now. So if you could take a deep breath in. And all the way out. All the way. Here the doctor is measuring all the lateral again. expansion of the chest during inspiration. Normally the distance between the thumbs should increase by more than 5 centimetres and expansion should be symmetrical. Here the doctor checks that the anterior posterior expansion of the chest is symmetrical. Here the doctor is feeling for the apex beat in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. 
This can be displaced if the mediastinum is shifted by a pneumothorax. The doctor is also feeding for a right ventricular heave. This is present in core pulmonale. I'm just going to tap on your chest now, if that's OK. The doctor is percussing in the upper, middle and lower zones, and the axilla, moving in an S shape to compare side to side. Could you put your hands on your hips for me, please? The doctor is listening for hyperresonance, dull resonance and stony dull resonance. Great, I'm going to have a listen to your chest now. Could you take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth, please? The doctor auscultates the left and right, upper, middle and lower zones, including the axilla in an S shape again. The doctor is listening for the intensity and quality of breath sounds and any added sounds. Breath sounds should be vesicular and equal bilaterally. Vesicular breathing sounds like this. In areas of consolidation and other lung pathologies, bronchial breathing can be heard, which sounds like this. Added breath sounds include inspiratory crepitations. These can be fine or coarse. An expiratory wheeze can be present. This is either monophonic or polyphonic. A pleural rub can also be heard in pneumonia and pulmonary infarction. Now could you say 99 each time I put my stethoscope on your chest? 99? Here the doctor is listening to vocal resonance and comparing the left and the right. In areas of lung consolidation, 99 is heard more clearly. But in areas of pleural effusion, the sound intensity is reduced or absent. I'm just going to feel for some of the glands in your neck, so if you'd like to just rest your chin against my fingertips. The doctor is palpating for the submental, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular, anterior cervical trunk, supraclavicular, posterior cervical trunk, and occipital lymph nodes. These are located as shown. I'm just going to have a look at your back. Here the doctor is looking for the same signs as on the front, as well as any spinal deformities. And I'm just going to put my hands around your back now, like we did on the front. If you could take a deep breath in, and all the way out. The doctor way. measures lateral expansion on the back, the as she did on the front. That's great, thank you. Do you have any pain in the bottom of your back? No. The doctor is checking for you peripheral edema, firmly. which occurs at the sacrum in bed-bound patients, and can be a sign of right-sided heart failure. Okay. I'm just going to tap on your back now, if that's okay. The doctor percusses the back in the upper, middle and lower zones, comparing the left and the right side, listening for the same pathologies as on the anterior chest wall. Good. And if I could just have a listen as well. Could you take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth, please? The doctor auscultates the left and right, upper, middle and lower zones for the intensity and quality of breath sounds and any added sounds. Signs are often clearer when listening to the posterior chest wall. And could you say 99 each time I put my stethoscope on your back, please? 99? 99? Once again, the doctor is listening to vocal resonance, listening for the same pathologies as for the anterior chest wall. 99? 99? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm just going to have a look at your legs. The doctor is looking for any signs of bruising or erythema nodosum. Do you have any pain in your ankles at all? No. Okay. I'm just going to press 
Stan. The doctor is feeling for pitting edema, which could indicate right-sided heart failure. And do you have any pain in your calves at all? No. The doctor is comparing each of the calves for redness, pain is and swelling, good? all of which could indicate a DVT. Thank you very much. That's the end of my examination. Would you like any help getting dressed? No, thank you. Okay. And are you comfortable there? Yes. Thank you very much. To complete my examination, I would like to take a set of observations including blood pressure, pulse oximetry and temperature. I would also like a sputum sample and to measure peak flow. I would do further investigations as indicated, including bloods and a chest x-ray. This video was produced by Oxford Medical Videos. For any questions, please comment below.